Hi everyone, in this video I'll be showing you how to use large language models for object detection uh, on images. So normally object detection is done using CNNs. Um, you've probably heard of models like YOLO, um, which are commonly used. But the downside is that you have to train these models um, using uh, large amounts of data, which can be time consuming and costly. Um, so the advantage to using LLMs is that you don't have to train it, um, and it should just work right out of the box for most um, kinds of objects. Another advantage is that you also get information about the the context surrounding that object, so where it's located, um, you know what it may look like, what color is it, um, things like that. A normal object detector like YOLO cannot give you that information. So the library we're going to be using for doing this is called LLMX, which is a simple toolkit for quickly developing LLM powered applications. So it gives us a couple different uh, types of agents like uh, function callers, online agents, and so on. But the one we're going to be using today is called the object detector. Um, and for our large language model, we're going to be using LAVA, uh, the 7 billion parameter uh, version. And I will be running the model through OLAMA, which is a, um, a nice little way to quickly uh, run models on your, on your device. So you can search Lava, and you can see the different uh, versions of Lava that we can use. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pip install LLMX. And I already have it, so it shouldn't install again. And after that, we can start importing the things that we need. So from LLMX, we're going to import Olama chat and the object detector agent. And I believe that's all we need for now. So let's initialize our LLM. So we give our model name. I will be using Lava 7B hosted through Olama, um, but you can use any hosting method that you would like. And I will have a tutorial in the description showing you how to do that. Um, for the model, you have to make sure that your model is vision capable. If your model cannot do vision, then the object detector will not work. So now we can make our detector. So the first thing it will ask is for the vision LLM. And that's pretty much what we just made. So we can pass that in. And then it will ask for a text LLM. And the text LLM is responsible for the final output. So if you wish to use a more capable LLM for the text alone, you can do that. But if your vision LLM is capable of text, then you can just pass in the same LLM. So in this case, I'm going to be using uh, Lava 7B for the final output as well. And then we also get temperature options, but for our use case, I'm just going to keep it the default number, which is 0 0.3. So let's do a test run um, and see what we get from this. So response equals detector.detect. And so we have to give it an image. It's a list of images, and we're going to be giving it, so you can actually give it a path or you can give it a base64 encoded image data. So in this case, I'm just going to give it the path to the image shelf.jpg. And the image is this. And then we have two options for how we want to run the detection. So we can either give it a list of objects that we want it to detect, or we can give it detection criteria. So if we do detection criteria, you, would, you could say something like, only detect things related to animals, for example. And we'll do its best to follow this criteria. So to just start off, let's actually say detect all objects in the image. And then let's print our response. So we got our response back, and you can see that it's in JSON format. And the detector will always respond in JSON. 
so that it's easier to process the output. So you can see we get a list of objects, and each object has a label, a location, and a description. So the first object is the shelf. It's on the wall, and it's made of wood and has two shelves on it. And we can confirm that, right? It's a two-shelf um, shelf. And then it gave a vase, framed photo, candle holder, plant pot, books. And I can confirm that these are all inside the image. As you can see, we have a pot, we have the picture frames, the candle holder. So it's doing a pretty good job. Um, so let's try to filter out this um, detection. So maybe we can say detect things only related to let's say plants for example so we got our response back and you can see the only object we get back is the plant and it's on the top shelf and it's in a white pot and we can confirm that i think it's counting both of them as one uh, which is fine so next let's try it the other way so we can give it an object list um, so let's do dog cat and picture frame so the expected output from this would be that it would not do this and it would just give us the picture frame so let's try that so we got our response back and you can see that the only thing to return is the picture frame and it gave, again, it gave us the location and description. I think in this case, the description is not correct, but that's kind of expected for a model this small. I think if you use um, something with more parameters, you might get better results for the small details like the location and description. But for the label, um, I think Lava 7 works pretty well. And um, if you want to process this output, LLM acts as a function called safe read JSON. So you can actually take the response and just put it inside this function. And that will return a proper Python dictionary um, of this structure, basically. So you could loop over the objects and get the labeled location and description. So the advantage of this is that you can pretty much detect anything inside of an image without any training or any data sets. The only downside is that you don't really get a bounding box. Um, I think there are models that can give you bounding boxes, but I think the most, most of the local models are not capable of giving you a bounding box. So that's one downside. But I think you can also combine this method with a segmentation model so that you run segmentation first and then you run this on top of it and then you can kind of put labels on the segmented objects inside of your image. Um, so you can look into that if you're interested about, you know, drawing bounding boxes on this. But that's all I wanted to show you for today. Um, thank you for watching.